Hi everyone, my name is Prawi and today I will be showing you a brief overview on how I automate figure production in QGIS. This video will be broken down into a couple of key steps including development of a coverage layer, assigning themes, producing a basic figure template, and creating an atlas map. There are many ways to develop figures in QGIS and I'm not suggesting this is the right way, but hopefully by the end of this video you'll have a framework and workflow which, which you can apply to, to a couple of key concepts to your own figure production which will hopefully remove some of the repetitive elements of figure production so you can spend time on the important things in life. Starting off, um, I've got a QGIS workspace here uh, of Sydney. So I've got the Sydney Opera House here, there's a bridge, um, and the Botanic Gardens and Circular Quay. And um, there are a couple of quick figures that I want to make and, um, and I'll, I guess, go over them now. Um, so starting off, I guess, you know, we've got aerial imagery, perhaps that's just all I want to show. So I'll start off with figure one being aerial imagery. Um, another figure that I could produce is perhaps one of topography. So I downloaded some topographical data um, and I've got some elevation maps here with some contours. Uh, and finally, using the imagery, I could overlay a couple of key components. So I've got some road names, for example, uh, building polygons and cadastral boundaries. Perhaps I might want to apply black or white imagery instead. So when it comes to figure production, one of the first things I typically do is I think about what are the figures that I actually want to produce. So I've shown you the, the three figures that I want to make. Uh, there's just the basic imagery, there's a topog topographical map, and then I'll call this one um, Sydney buildings, for example. Um, and what I'll do is I will populate an Excel table with that information. So I've just got this um, Excel table called coverage layout template. Um, it's got a couple of columns here and I'll be populating them now. So as I mentioned, there's the three figures that I want to make, figure one, two, and three. The first one was just the aerial imagery. The second one was the topography. And the third, I'm going to call that Sydney's buildings. And then I also have another column called export name. And um, I'll tell you why that's important in a second. But first of all, let's concate uh, the figure number and the name. So concatenate, is that the right word? I don't know. Let's put an underscore and aerial imagery. Let's drag that down. So. When I export my, um, I guess, figures, these are the names that, uh, these are the file names that they're going to have. Uh, one thing to know when you're exporting file names is that the Window Explorer doesn't like a couple of special characters. Those include um, like percentage signs, etc. I'm not sure if um, apostrophes are allowed, but just to be safe, what I'm going to do is remove that apostrophe so that when it exports, it's just called Sydney's Buildings grammatically correct, but whatever. Um, I'm also going to be assigning themes, and um, I'll be talking about what a theme is shortly, but in essence, um, it's a pre-selected um, selection of layers that you can call back on. So I'm just going to call this one, one aerial, two topo, three building, and then assign an X and Y coordinate. Um, this is, so this Excel table is more or less going to become a point shape file. So I just want to pick a spot where um, I can place those points. So what I'm going to actually do is I might pick the centroid of where I think my um, figure is going to be. This isn't that important, but um, I'm just going to zoom into one spot and then copy and paste these coordinates. Um, zoom back out, go back to the Excel spreadsheet, paste that here. So we've got your, I guess, X coordinate and your Y coordinate. I'm working in Map Grid of Australia coordinates, which are in meters, but you can use lat long if you need to. And then the scale in which I'm going to use, I think it's going to be around 5,000-ish. Let's just call it 5,000 for now. Ooh, not 500. Okay, um, so I guess these are the three figures that I'm going to make. That's all populated. Now, of course, um, you might have way more figures than this, and yeah, do whatever you need to do to populate your, um, I guess, coverage layer. I'm going to save that and 
and minus for now. Um, next up, I'm going to work on developing some themes. So if you've never worked with themes before, they're a really, really useful tool. And I'll show you an example and come back to it in a second. So we mentioned the first image or figure we wanted was just a basic aerial image. So I've selected the layers that I want. It's just this, it's called footprint. I want to rename that imagery for now, just so it's not confusing. Um, and I've deselected everything I don't want. I'm going to go back to my XLR and I'm going to copy the theme that I've assigned it. It's such a basic name. And there's this little map themes um, toggle button here. Oh, I've already made the themes. I'm going to do some uh, movie magic and come back to this. Let's remove this thing. Oops. Move thing. Move thing. Put that. Okay. Okay. Cut. And back. Okay, so I'm going to go up to this button, which will toggle my map themes or manage my map themes. So I've selected the layers that I want open, and I'm going to add a theme and give it the name. I'm going to call it one underscore aerial. Uh, so if I turn that off and say I have some other layers on, and I want to go back to, I guess, that pre-selected layer theme, I can hit this button, hit aerial, and it will turn on the relevant layers that I selected, pre-selected. So I'm going to do the same thing for my topography. So what was the name we selected? To underscore topo. So we go manage map themes, add theme to underscore topo. And finally, we have the building polygons, road segments, and casual lots. And I wanted the black and white imagery. And we called that three underscore buildings. OK. So just to do a quick sanity check that they're doing what we want them to do, let's have another look at Topo. Yep, that looks right. Uh, aerial, that looks good. Buildings, that looks great. Okay, uh, next we are ready to import what we call a coverage layer or develop a coverage layer. This can be done in a number of ways. You can do it manually by creating a shapefile, um, but we are going to import this data and turn it into a point file. So. We go layer, add layer, add delimited text layer. I'm going to search for that file. It's coverage layer templates. Um, and then we want to assign the X and Y coordinates, which looks like it's been pre populated for me. And with any luck, it will be somewhere, these three points will be uh, somewhere nearby, which uh, looks like. Oops, where is it gone? Oh yeah, it's somewhere. It's hiding. Oh, there it is. Okay, so uh, let's give it some. One sec. Okay, right, so you can see our point there. And if I um, look at the attribute table, you can see our points there, which is great. Um, this is just saved in memory at the moment, I might export it and save it as a, um, as a coverage layer, point layer. Um, and remove that one. And we'll be calling this coverage layer in a second. So I think now we're ready to move on to developing a little figure template. So up here, we've got show layout manager. I don't have any um, layouts developed yet, so I might just create an empty layout. And let's call it Sydney Figures. Okay, so I've opened up a new window. And currently it's blank. Um, you can manage your page properties. A4 Landscape is fine with me. Um, next, we can add not a picture, but a map. So let's just use up the whole frame. And we can also add a legend. Okay, so um, now what we want to be able to do is create an atlas. And the way we do that is we move over to Atlas. We want to generate an atlas and use the coverage layer point file that we recently made as our coverage layer. 
uh, give the net give the page a name. We call that name, and then we can also create an expression for the outlets. The outputs we can use that um, export name that we developed earlier. So I'm just going to call it export name, and this will all make sense soon enough. I hope. And once you've generated an atlas, you can um, preview the atlas by clicking this button. And with any luck, um, it can be a little bit buggy. So I'm going to save, close it, and reopen. If I create preview the atlas again. Oh, OK. So I've got these three layers, but my map's not changing. And the reason why is because I haven't told the map where to look, if that makes sense. Um, so what you can do is, in the item properties, you can follow a map theme. You may recall we created those three themes, one underscore imagery, two underscore topo, three underscore uh, buildings. Uh, we can follow a map theme, and you can assign it a variable, or not, sorry, a field, and assign it the theme that we made earlier. OK, so what this does is, it calls the, um, I guess, oh, with any luck. Yeah, it calls the relevant layers within the themes for each figure. Um, just a little bit slow on my end, but it, it will get there. Um, other things we can work with, uh, we did um, specify a scale. Now I have to find it. Oh, there's a scale here. So we can assign that the variable scale. So now we're probably zooming a little bit too much, but that's OK. We're just demonstrating what we can do with, with our work. Um, and then perhaps we might um, modify this slightly. Uh, I'll just do some little updates. Uh, maybe I'll only show items linked inside the map. I might hide. The bits that I don't want to show. Um, let's don't want that. Don't want that, for example. And we can do a whole bunch of modifications here. Um, and I don't really want to spend too much time on that. Um, but uh, for now, perhaps let's keep the legend out of it. Um, and yet, we're pretty much ready to export, I guess, our three figures. So you can export them individually using these um, three icons here. But uh, if you want to export them all at once, you can go export Atlas as images, or you can do a PDF as well. Um, specify where you want to save it. So let's go output here. Select the folder. Um, choose your export settings. I'll keep the defaults. Okay, <clears throat> once that's finished exporting, you can come and check your figures. So you can see the three figures with the name export names that we allocated earlier. Um, and we can just have a quick look. That's the aerial imagery, the topography, and the buildings. Looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Now with this, I guess now that you have worked with coverage layer, um, themes, and atlases, there's a lot of capability you can, you can I guess, build on to, um, to I guess, further improve your figures. So, um, you know, when it comes to tweaking your legend or um, just like where each figure is placed, the scale, the size, the legend size, all of those are, um, I guess, can be managed by variables in the coverage layer itself. So you can recall that you know we referred to the scale to set the scale. Um, we can you know assign the export name using calling the export name, etc. Um, you can add text um, within your figures and assign it you know the name, etc. So there's plenty more you can do. Um, beyond, I guess, what I've shown you. So hopefully you can just see what uh, is possible as a starting point and 
um, yeah, build on from that. So good luck with your figure production. Hopefully this helped. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and I look forward to catching up with you next time.